Okay. <laughs> so the technology works this morning. I guess a little bit of pressure to speak uh, Sunday morning at 9.30 and in sunny Puerto Rico. Um, I know you all have uh, the nice weather outside and, and choose to be here uh, inside, so that's a little bit of pressure on me, but uh, I'll try to do my best. So it is a very different world than it was even 20 years ago. Um, 25 years ago, when I uh, started my academic career, the world is actually a very different place than it is today. And uh, we'll just talk about three different aspects of what is facing the next generation. And there is a new economic reality that we're facing today that's very different from what we were facing uh, even just two decades ago. The new technological frontiers, uh, they of course are advancing all the time. However, that has uh, changed the face of what some of the new challenges are. And of course, we have new grand challenges for our time. Uh, that is going to shape our future in many ways. So let's start by talking about that. And after that, I'm going to talk a little bit about how could industrial engineers specifically to make an impact in this new world. And I'm going to talk in terms of some specifics, in terms of what are the things that we, we can do uh, to actually make an impact and, uh, uh, and to face this new, uh, new world. So the first lens, I would call it the technology lens. Right? And you can call this the, the innovation clock speed. And this, the clock speed is getting faster and faster and faster. So in other words, what you learn in school today, by the time you graduate and 10 years later, you're going to find that a lot of the technology has changed in a very rapid fashion. You, you probably don't, won't recognize it anymore. And that also means that you need to be continuously learning new things because of how fast these, the clock speed has become. And the next lens is the employment lens in terms of you know, where are the jobs, right? Where are people hiring and uh, what is the global labor trend? So I'll, I'll talk about this uh, in a minute and let's think about employment in three basic sectors, right? And that constitutes uh, the, the, primarily the, um, uh, the economy and the world, so you think about some very broad sectors. Agri agriculture, which is basically you generate value from harvesting from the nature, right? And this, you know, most societies come from that agricultural past. Goods, which is basically value that's uh, uh, generated from making products, right? We have been uh, doing this for quite a long time. And then services, value from enhancing the capabilities of things, not just making them, but also enhancing the capabilities of them in terms of customizing something or distribution and the interaction between things. So that's broadly categorized as services. So this is uh, from the employment point of view. Uh, and the third point of view, which is probably more uh, revealing uh, because the employment record, we're just looking at basically what happened in the past, and let's take a look at what, it, what could the, t the past tell us something about the future. And what is really going on here is kind of uh, interesting. And productivity, which is really what drives competitiveness, right? So the, the different nations have different degree of, of competitiveness. So this is talking about uh, uh, the GDP growth, right? Which is really, you know, a, a substitute for uh, how well the economy has been growing. So you look at, you know, from the 1960s to now and projected to uh, 2020, and on the top there you see the, the GDP growth, 4.1%, 3.1%, 3.2%, and, and now it's 2.2% during that, during, by decades, right? And then you think about what, what contribute to that GDP growth or the economic growth? And that, that basically boils down to two main forces. One is the increase in the workforce. Another is increase in terms of the value add per worker or you, another term for it is productivity, 